The Last of Us Part 2 is only 25 days away from being released to all of us, and what better way to spend the rest of the time waiting for this game than revisiting the first game, The Last of Us Part 1. This is AP from AP Gaming, and in this video, I am going to continue the countdown series with a character analysis on one of the most badass female characters in gaming history, Ellie. So before diving balls deep into the character of Ellie, and to get to know everything there is to know about her before we play The Last of Us Part 2, subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and like the video, because it really helps the channel to get noticed and to grow so I can bring more quality content for you guys. So let's not waste any more time and let's get to know everything there is to know about our beloved Ellie. Okay. So now that we are going to dive into a deep analysis on Ellie, I'm going to show you three parts in which we're going to describe Ellie in full. Ellie's personality, Ellie's skills, and Ellie's story. Now before advancing, I just want to clarify that in this video, there will be spoilers for The Last of Us Part 1 and the DLC, The Last of Us Left Behind. So if you haven't played those games yet, I highly recommend you do so and then come back to this video. So before going into her personality, if you guys did not know, Ellie actually has a last name in the game, but it's never mentioned, and her last name is Williams. Ellie Williams. And that's basically where we start. Now going into Ellie's personality. Because Ellie grew up in an environment in which modern standards vanished because of the horrible virus that impacted humanity on 2013 in this universe, her personality is more on the rash side cursing left, right, and center all the time. She's very impulsive, has a horrible temper, and isn't afraid to show what she feels, usually by using a lot of profanity. Also, when she needs to use violence, she's not afraid to use it if it's to defend herself or to defend others she cares about. Now, she's not a cold person by nature, or because of the world she lives in. She still has that little innocent side in her, that little playful, childish attitude. We also see her humorous self when she is with Joel when they are on their way to look for the fireflies. Ellie would sometimes read Joel some jokes to lighten the mood up. Ready for a joke? I tried to catch some fog earlier. I missed. <laughs> <sighs> Do you know what's not right? Left? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. What does a pirate say while eating sushi? I don't know what. Ahoy! Pass me some soy. I don't get it. People are making apocalypse jokes like there's no tomorrow. Too soon. Okay, I'm all joked out. Now what? We can also see in the mission storyline in which Joel looks for Bill so that Bill can fix up a car for Joel because Bill owed Joel some favors. Ellie stole a magazine with gay porn in it. She would jokingly ask Joel how men could walk with that, referring to a penis, and what they were used for. And you can see Joel being kind of uncomfortable, not knowing what to say to Ellie. And Ellie just responds saying that she was joking with him. These scenes show the innocent and humorous side of Ellie, and that was a great contrast for this dark story. But shamefully, that side of Ellie would soon be lost when she faces some traumatic moments, and she would see what humans are actually capable of during her adventure with Joel. Other interesting things about Ellie's personality is that she suffers from monophobia, which means the phobia or fear of being alone. She admits this to Sam before he turned into an infected. And she also admitted this to Joel when she says that everybody that she has lost, they either died or left her except for Joel. And that if she was alone, she would just be more scared without him. And the most interesting and most obvious one, because of The Last of Us Part 2 trailers, is about Ellie's sexuality that is confirmed that she's a lesbian and she's involved romantically with a character named Dina in that story, which we will know more about in The Last of Us Part 2, coming in just 25 days.
Ellie in The Last of Us Part 1 is honestly not very skillful in survival techniques. Hopefully, she learned how to swim in Part 2, just like she learned how to play guitar from Joel. She, in the beginning of The Last of Us, is restrained from a gun because Joel doesn't trust her, because she's very young. Then Joel decided to let Ellie use a rifle and help Joel clear out some men in one of the sections during the Pittsburgh mission. After that, Joel then entrusted Ellie with a pistol because it's more her size, in his words, in which now Ellie is more participant when there's a fight going on in the game. She shows that she's very capable on using a gun because she actually helps Joel effectively. By Ellie being smaller than Joel, she also suffers in hand-to-hand -hand combat and struggles massively compared to Joel who of course is used to this type of violence and is a bigger man. Ellie to defeat grown men, she would actually have to use stealth and use her switchblade to stab her opponents in the neck or head, or she would have to be in a distance and shoot her enemy. And because she's inexperienced compared to Joel, she is considered easy to trap by the psychopath and cannibal David, in which Ellie meets later in the game. She managed to kill David because she used David's machete against him and basically cut him into pieces. If not, Ellie would have died choked to death by David because, of course, he's a bigger man. One last thing that could also be considered a skill of Ellie is Ellie's immunity towards the infection. Due to a strange mutation in her brain, she is also immune to bites and spores. Now, shamefully, this immunity doesn't protect her from the infected because the infected do not recognize her as their own. So Ellie still has to be careful to not get eaten alive by these infected. According to the history books of The Last of Us, Ellie Williams was born around the years of 2018 and 2019, with no specific date. Her mother Anna was a good friend of Marlene, the leader of the Fireflies, who we get to know in the first hours of The Last of Us. And, right before Anna died, she asked Marlene to take care of Ellie. So, long story short, in the American Dreams comic book, we see Ellie, at the age of 13, arriving into the oppressive military quarantine zone in Boston on a bus. Ellie then meets this girl called Riley, who would take Ellie to this abandoned mall in Boston, where they would meet a guy named Winston who teaches Ellie how to ride a horse. Then an explosion happens nearby because the Fireflies were fighting the military. Riley, who stole some smoke bombs from Winston's tent, throws it at the military to help the Fireflies escape. This is where we see the Fireflies and Marlene after they save the girls from a few infected in an alley. Riley then tells Marlene that she knows who she is and that she wants to join the Fireflies. Marlene aggressively grabs Riley, telling her that if she thinks that this is all a game, and that she doesn't know the sacrifice involved in all of this. Riley then tells Marlene that she had to watch her dad rip her mom apart, and that she had to kill her own dad. Ellie, to free Riley from Marlene, grabs one of the Firefly's guns without them realizing, and shoots near Marlene to make her let go of Riley. Marlene then reveals that she was good friends with Ellie's mom, Anna, and she handed Ellie her mom's switchblade and a letter. Ellie later in the room reads the letter from her mom and has the switchblade in her hand, and you can see that she's very, very sad. Then we advance to the events of The Last of Us Left Behind. So it was the summer of 2033, and Ellie and Riley had a big argument, and Riley disappeared. One night, Ellie is sleeping in her bed. Riley then enters her room and scares Ellie by biting her neck. Ellie, scared as hell, grabs her switchblade under her pillow to kill the supposed infected that she thought bit her, when she then realizes that it was Riley who actually did it. They haven't seen each other for more than two months, and Ellie really thought Riley was dead all this time because she actually never came back to school. Riley then shows Ellie that she joined the Fireflies, and that's why she was gone for more than two months. And understandably, Ellie was just furious. But Riley told Ellie that if they could go somewhere, and that she would explain everything. Ellie gets dressed and follows Riley out. Ellie asks Riley, how did she join the Fireflies? And Riley then tells her that she followed a guy named Trevor, 
who Ellie bit when they first met Marlene. So she was ambushed and then taken directly to Marlene, in which Marlene finally accepted Riley into the Fireflies. Riley then takes Ellie to the mall, where they previously met Wiston. They had fun putting some masks on, they had a window breaking competition on some cars, and Riley admitted to Ellie that she did not mean the things that she told Ellie when they had the argument that drifted them apart. Riley then shows Ellie that the mole has power, and they go to a carousel. They get their pictures taken in a photo booth, and they also head to the arcade, in which only one gaming machine was actually powered, but unfortunately was broken. So, Riley being a good friend, puts Ellie's hands on the controls and makes Ellie imagine that she's playing the game. This type of innocence, and just kids being kids in that era, is honestly heartwarming. Ellie then tells Riley that she has to go, and that they could hang out another day. But Riley says that they cannot hang anymore, because the Fireflies are actually relocating her. Ellie, feeling mad again, wonders why Riley took her to the mall if she was leaving. Riley leaves because she hears music sounding nearby. Ellie catches up to her and asks Riley that if she felt guilty. And that's why she was trying to make Ellie feel better by going to the mall. But Riley then says that guilt did not make her risk her life to see Ellie because now she's a firefly. Riley then throws her backpack on the floor containing water guns that belong to Ellie but were confiscated from the school in Boston. Then they have a water gun fight. And after that fight, Ellie admits that she understands and that Riley should follow whatever she wanted to do all along and actually join the Fireflies. After that conversation, Riley asks Ellie if she still has her Walkman and Ellie gives it to her. Riley connects it to a few speakers and turns on the music on the Walkman and both start dancing on top of the store's counter. After that, Ellie stops dancing. Ellie then tells Riley not to go. So Riley rips her firefly necklace and throws it to the ground. And then, Ellie kisses Riley. And that's where we actually find out about Ellie's sexuality. And it's revealed that she's a lesbian. Then, after that kiss, a horde of infected come their way, attracted by the music. So both Riley and Ellie make it out, killing all those infected magically. But they weren't so lucky, because they both got bit in the process. After that, they both sit down, sad as hell, not knowing what to do. Riley then tells Ellie that they should fight for every last second they have together. And worst case scenario, they'll just lose their minds together. But sadly, Riley's the one who actually died, and Ellie survived. After that, Marlene took Ellie under her wing. And now that she knows that Ellie is actually immune to the virus, the original plan was to take Ellie to Salt Lake Hospital. But things changed. And now we go to the events of The Last of Us Part 1. Marlene was shot, so she asked Joel and Tess to take Ellie to the Fireflies themselves as cargo, and then Marlene would return their merchandise back to them that were sold to the Fireflies from Robert. This is the moment in which we meet Ellie in the first game. After this scene, Joel takes Ellie to an apartment in which they're going to wait for Tess after Marlene shows Tess all their merchandise. After this scene, Tess, Joel, and Ellie sneak their way out of the quarantine zone, but are caught by some soldiers who start to test them to see if they are infected. And this happens. Requesting pickup for three stragglers. Understood. Look the other way. I can make this worth your while. Shut up. Tired of this shit. Mm-hmm. What's the ETA? Couple minutes. Oh, fuck. I thought we were just gonna... Hold him up or something. Holy oh, shit. Look. Jesus Christ. Marlene set us up? Why the hell are we smuggling an infected girl? I'm not infected. No? Was this lying? 
I can explain. You better explain fast. Look at this. I don't care how you got infected. It's three weeks old. No, everyone turns within two days, so you stop bullshitting. It's three weeks. I swear. Why would she set you up? We can see in this scene, Ellie trying to explain that she was bitten three weeks ago, but they don't believe her. The moment in which they believe her is when they get to the building in which they were going to meet the fireflies, and this is the moment in which Tess says that in on their way she was actually bitten, and that her infection looks way, way worse than Ellie's bite. Holy shit. She's infected. Joel. Let me see. I didn't mean for this. Show it to me. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Oops, right? Give me your arm. This was three weeks. I was bitten an hour ago, and it's already worse. This is fucking real, Joel. You've got to get this girl to Tommy's. He used to run with this crew. He'll know where to go. No, 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 no. That was your crusade. I am not doing that. Yes, you are. Look, there's enough here that you have to feel some sort of obligation to me, so you get her to Tommy's. Ellie was feeling very, very guilty. And after they escaped the Boston soldiers, she was trying to say sorry to Joel about Tess. But Joel being very sad, told Ellie to shut up and to never ever bring Tess up again. She agrees and they continue to look for Bill, an old friend of Joel's that owes him a favor, and Joel asks him for a car. In this moment of the story, we see Ellie's rash and foul-mouthed personality in the way she talks to Bill, because Bill was actually being an asshole to her. Anything sprouting? Oh, God damn it, I'm clean! I see so much as a truck. Ow! Stop! Son of a bitch! Are you done? Am I done? You come into my house. You set off all my traps. You damn near break my shooting arm. Who the fuck is this punk and what's she doing here? I am none of your goddamn business. And we're here because you owe Joel some favors. And oh. you can start by taking these off. I owe Joel some favors. It's some kind of joke. I'll cut to the chase. I need a car. Well, it is a joke. Joel needs a car. Well, if I had one that works, which I sure as hell don't, what makes you think I'd just give it to you? Huh? Yeah, sure, Joel, go ahead, take my car. Take all my food, too, while you're at it. By the looks of it, you could lose some of that food. You listen to me, you little shit. No, fuck you, you handcuff me. I you. need you to shut up. It ain't like that, it's bullshit. It is just like that. Hey! what I say to you when we walk down the steps? what I say? I'm just fixing your... Stupid pile! Don't touch! God damn it. What I love about these scenes is that this is exactly how teenagers like Ellie will love to act and to say to adults today if they had the chance. But because this is a different world in which Ellie lives in, with no standards anymore, well, Ellie doesn't give a crap. After Bill gets a car ready for Joel and they make their way to Pittsburgh, we see a hilarious scene in which Ellie messes with Joel. And honestly, this has to be top three scenes for me in The Last of Us Part 1. Well, better than nothing. Oh, I'm sure your friend will be missing this tonight. Mm -hmm. It's light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa! How... How the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Well, hold Just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh. Why are these all stuck together? Um. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Bye-bye, dude. <laughs> you know what? This isn't that bad. Why you try to get some sleep? Right. I'm not even tired.
after they get attacked by a few hunters getting into Pittsburgh, Ellie gets a little bit more comfortable with Joel. This is the part of the story in which we see more of a connection Ellie is feeling with Joel. Even though Joel doesn't trust Ellie with a gun still, and constantly makes her feel, well, like cargo, just useless, Ellie still has her childish attitude, and sometimes even cracks up a few jokes here and there. But we see also Ellie being capable to save Joel's life by shooting a guy in the head that was choking Joel. And later, she was trusted by Joel with a rifle to clear out some enemies and to help Joel clear out the section. Oh shit! Come here, get me head down. All right now, I'm gonna jump down there and I'm gonna clear us a path. What about me? You stay here. This is so stupid. We'd have more of a fucking chance if you let me help. I am. You seem to know your way around a gun. You reckon you can handle that? Well, I sort of shot a rifle before, but it was at rats. Rats? With BBs. Well, it's the same basic concept. Lift it up. All right, now. You're going to lean right into that stock because it is going to kick a hell of a lot more than any baby rifle. Okay. Go and pull the bolt back. Grab it right there. Just tug it. Here you go. And as soon as you fire, you're going to want to get another round in there quick. Listen to me. If I get into trouble down there, you make every shot count. Yeah. I got this. All right. And just so we're clear about back there, it was either him or me. You're welcome. After that, Joel gives Ellie a gun and starts to bond and actually trust in her. Then after that, we meet Henry and Sam. We see Ellie building a bond with Sam but then they are separated. When the ladder on the truck broke, and then Ellie decided to jump down and stay with Joel. And here's where we see Ellie showing that she actually cares for Joel, and that no matter what, they're going to stick together. Later, Henry and Sam saves Ellie and Joel when they jumped into the river trying to escape the hunters, and then they continue to where they were going to meet the fireflies. After fighting a few more infected and hunters, Joel and Henry start to bond, and Ellie tries to connect a little bit more with Sam, who is kind of distant in this scene. Next morning, Ellie tries to wake up Sam, when she gets attacked by an infected Sam, who was actually bitten the day before. Henry then saves Ellie by shooting Sam. Henry incredibly emotional after losing his brother, he ended his life, which marked the beginning of a more depressed Ellie in the story. Joel and Ellie move to Jackson County, where Joel believes his brother Tommy, a former member of the Fireflies, can show them their location. During their stay with Tommy, Ellie learns from Maria of Sarah, Joel's daughter, who tragically died in the start of the outbreak. She also sensed that Joel planned to leave her with Tommy, leading her to run away to an abandoned ranch house. When Joel catches up to her, the two have a heated argument where it becomes very, very obvious how much they actually have bonded and care for each other during their travels. And one of the most emotional scenes in the whole game happens. Is this really all they had to worry about? Boys, movies, deciding which shirt goes with which skirt. It's bizarre. Get up. We're leaving. Come on. And if I say no? Do you even realize what your life means? Huh? Running off like that, putting yourself at risk? It's pretty goddamn stupid. Well, I guess we're both disappointed with each other then. What do you want from me? Admit that you wanted to get rid of me the whole time. Tommy knows this area. Oh, fuck than... that. Well, I'm sorry. I trust him better than I trust myself. Stop with the bullshit. What are you so afraid of? 
that I'm gonna end up like Sam? I can't get infected. I can take care of myself. How many close calls have we had? Well, we seem to be doing all right so far. And now you'll be doing even better with Tommy. Not her, you know. What? Maria told me about Sarah. Ellie? And... You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel, but I have lost people too. You have no idea what loss is. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. After that emotional scene, we see that what Ellie told Joel actually had an effect on him, to the point in which he decided to take Ellie himself to the Fireflies. In that moment, Ellie made Joel open up to her, and then we see how their relationship blossomed into something beautiful. Joel and Ellie then reached the university where the Fireflies were supposed to be. The Fireflies are nowhere to be found. Then they find out that they went to Salt Lake Hospital in Salt Lake City, and then the two of them are met with a large group of cannibals. During a brutal fight, Joel falls and is impaled in the abdomen and leaves the fighting to Ellie. Ellie stitched Joel up and goes out to look for food and supplies. She manages to kill a deer and then meets a guy named David, who we later find out that is the leader of the cannibals and has been looking for Joel and Ellie all this time. And this is how he tells Ellie. Well, you handled yourself pretty nice back there. <laughs> I'd say we make a pretty good team. We got lucky. Lucky? No, no. No such thing as luck. Now, you see, I believe that everything happens for a reason. Sure. Well, I do. And I can prove it to you. Now, this winter, well, it's been especially cruel. Now, a few weeks back, I uh, sent a group of men out to a nearby town to look for food. Only a few came back. He said that the others had been uh, slaughtered by a crazy man. And get this, he's a crazy man traveling with a little girl. You see, everything happens for a reason. Uh, don't get upset. It's not your fault. I'm just a kid. James, lower the gun. No way, David. I'm not gonna let her lower go. Lower the gun. Now give her the medicine. The others won't be happy about this. Yeah, well, that's not your concern. Move the fuck out of the way. You won't survive long out there. I can't protect you. No oh, thanks. Ellie leaves and comes back to Joel with some medicine. And the next day, she notices that she was tracked down by David's men, that they were meant to kill Joel. She tries to drive them away from Joel, but is captured by David himself and locked in a holding cell in which she gets traumatized after seeing one of David's men cut a human into pieces. David then comes and tells Ellie that she's special and that she should stay with him in a very weird way and Ellie, being Ellie, breaks his finger. After that, some men and David try to slice her and she bites David and then says she's infected and then runs away. David catches up to her in a restaurant that is starting to catch on fire. Ellie hides and then stabs David in the back. Both fall very hard on the floor and then both become unconscious. 
Ellie then wakes up and goes to David's machete. But David catches up to her and then the most traumatizing but the most emotional scene as well happens in The Last of Us Part 1. It's okay to give up. Ain't no shame in it. <laughs> I guess not. Just not your style, is it? You can try begging. Fuck you. You think you know me? Huh? Let me tell you something. You have no idea what I'm capable of. Stop! Stop! Fucking touch me! It's okay. It's me. It's me. It's me. Look, look. It's me. He tried to. Joel and Ellie make it to Salt Lake City, and you can see Ellie being distracted, just not being her normal self. Then we get one of the most beautiful and heartwarm scenes in this game. Oh my god. What is it? Ellie! Ellie! I gotta see this. What is it? What the hell is it? Are you kidding me? Come on, hurry up. Slow down, kiddo. Come on. Hurry up, come on, come on, come on. Oh, man. Wow. Look at those things. It's got its ups and downs, but you can't deny the view, though. After Ellie reassures Joel about meeting the fireflies, both Ellie and Joel almost drown. And Joel saves her, but then they were met with the fireflies, and instead of greeting Joel, 
they knock him out. Later, we see Marlene telling Joel that Ellie has to die because that's the only way to extract a vaccine. Joel kills everyone he needed to kill and saves Ellie's life. Also, killing Marlene in the process so she doesn't come looking back for Ellie. Ellie then feels very sad when she wakes up. And by the end of the story, Ellie comes clean with her doubts and asks Joel if what he said about the fireflies giving up on a cure and that there were many like her were all true. Ellie probably was seen through Joel's lie, but she decides to accept it and says, Okay. And this is all we know about Ellie. She lost everyone she cared about, her mother Anna, her best friend Riley, Tess, Sam, and Marlene. She lost her innocence with a traumatizing moment with David. But even through all that, she managed to build a relationship so strong with Joel that Joel himself decided to throw away the only possibility for a cure for humanity, for his little Ellie. This story, the way it explains their characters by putting them in situations in which we all can feel for them is honestly insane how Naughty Dog pulled this off. I can't wait to play The Last of Us Part 2 and see what happens after. In my next video, we will be doing a full character analysis on our beloved character, Joel. So stay tuned for that video coming very, very soon. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. Like this video because it really helps for the channel to get noticed. Share this video and don't forget to comment down in the section down below and tell me what is your favorite thing about Ellie. Stay positive, stay safe, keep playing, and I'll see you guys for the character analysis on Joel. Goodbye.